greeting, brothers and sisters. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, I pray all is well with you and your families. Um, I pray that you know that the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is with us, brothers and sisters. I pray, most importantly, my brothers and sisters, that you know he's faithful, okay? And um, I pray that you understand um, that in all things, brothers and sisters, in all things that are going on around us, brothers and sisters, and all things that are happening, brothers and sisters, we must remain faithful. Brothers and sisters, no matter what goes on around us, we must indeed remain faithful. Okay? Okay. Brothers and sisters, there are many things that are happening that would try to rock our faith, that would try to shake our faith, brothers and sisters. But if we rem but if we remain in Christ, brothers and sisters, we can always be faithful to his name. Okay. And brothers and sisters. Let us be encouraged by his love. Man, let us be encouraged by his love for Christ gave his life for us when yet we were sinners dead in our sin and yet he gave himself away. Man. Brothers and sisters, I have a word for you today. Um, It's a heavy meal. It's a heavy meal, but it's definitely needed, brothers and sisters, okay? But before we get into the word of the Lord today, let's pray so our heart to be able to get into a place to receive all that the Lord has to pour into us today, okay? So without, for, without further ado, brothers and sisters, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Wise Father, we come before you humbly, Lord. We repent of our sins, Lord. Please forgive us of our sin. We come before your throne. Draw near to us, please, in this moment, Lord. Lord, we are in desperate need of your grace, in desperate need of your mercy, in desperate need of your wisdom, Lord, daily in our life, Lord, and even especially, Lord, in such an hour that we are in. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would speak to us today, Lord, that it'll cause our heart to cry out for you even more, to cry out for repentance even more, to cry out for unity with you, Lord, being reconciled to you through the grace of your son, Jesus, Lord. Lord, we cannot live without you. We need you for everything, Lord. Please speak to us, Lord, because, Lord, we know you don't have to, Lord, because, your, Lord, your word is precious. We know you don't have to. Lord, we say out of your mercy, Lord, you don't need mercy. please speak to us, Lord, that we may encounter your presence, that we may get a greater revelation of who you are, that we may be free from the condemnation of this life. If we don't know you, no, if, and if we don't know you, or if we have not received you, that we may be free from the condemnation of our sins by having faith in who you are. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Have your way and speak freely to us as you will. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, brothers and sisters, well, brothers and sisters, um, Let's get into this word, okay? Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, we must get an understanding. We must indeed get an understanding, brothers and sisters, that God is faithful. Okay? And we must get an understanding that everything in this life was created for his glory. That everything in this life was created for the glory of God. And we have to humble ourselves in a posture of humility that we get a revelation that everything was created for his glory and not for man. Now, do we know as we if as if everything as everything was created for his glory, then as we walk in obedience. With that glory, we are able to experience the things that are associated with his glory. Let me give you an example. Us who are parents got kids in our household. Okay? The child, the, the little kids does not have a job, right? They don't have a job. And the parent get out work, provide food to go on the table for the child. Now, the child does not work for the food that is provided on the table because the parent get out and work and bring it in the house through the grace of the Lord. Okay. Now, 
even though the child that de de does not work, she or, she or he are able to experience the food that the parent put on the table because the child is connected to the parent. Though the child is not working, they have access to the food because of the parent. Oh, well, because of the father sacrifice in heaven through his son, Christ Jesus, we have access to the kingdom of heaven. We could not work to earn this salvation, but God got out. God sent the work and prepared a table for us through the sacrifice of his son. And because of Jesus, we have access to the table of heaven. Oh, man. Because of Jesus, we have access to the table of heaven. And as we get a revelation that we have access to the table of heaven, we must also get the revelation that even the table that had been prepared for us was prepared by his glory and for his glory to for us to experience him forever. And the Lord says, son, speak this to my church. The title of this message is for his glory. Let Jesus be exalted. The title of this message is for his glory. Let Jesus be exalted. Brothers and sisters, the title of this message is for his glory. Let Jesus be exalted. Brothers and sisters, I was in worship this morning. Listen to a a worship song this morning that my wife turned me on to uh, by this gentleman named uh, Jonathan Taylor and it said, let God get the glory. And as I began to listen to this, as I, and as I began to listen to the song, it struck me so hard in the spirit. And as I listened to the song, one of the verses of the song said, no matter what I go through in this life, let God get the glory. And if this cup cannot pass me, let him get the glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, there's a time in our life, there's a time in our faith that it has to be challenged because a faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. And in this hour, brothers and sisters, our faith is being tested. But if you are a true believer in Christ and you and if we are truly living for his glory, then there has to be a posture in our heart that no matter what I go through. Whether it's suffering or not suffering, no matter what I go through, let God get the glory. Because, see, when we come to repentance of the gospel, when we come to uh, when we come to repentance in the gospel we are literally confessing with our mouth saying let God get the glory because even through God grace and his mercy we receive forgiveness of our sin but also in the gospel it was the sovereign will of God sovereign will of God glory because they said we did not love God but he loved us first but he, but he loved us first yet he chose us when yet we were sinners we did not choose him but he chose us so god chose us he begotten us through his son which is the god of his son christ jesus who is revealed in the gospel okay? so it was god will for the gospel it was god glory for the gospel because god glory is revealed through the gospel and God's glory is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And any men that walk in Christ access eternal life. And as he walk in Christ, he will be received up into eternal life in the new heaven and new earth when he comes. <laughs> Therefore, as we walk in Christ, we get a taste of heaven or what eternal life will be by be like as we be with him by, because we are baptized in his spirit. But that one who is the Holy Spirit bring us to remembrance of everything his son have taught us, which is the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And that righteousness that he taught to us encourages us to run this race by faithful obedience for his glory. 
So the gospel was created for his glory. And as we obey the gospel, we experience his glory. Oh, man. The gospel was created for his glory. And as we obey the gospel, according to the faith of his son, we experience his glory because we now have access to heaven through his Holy Spirit. Oh, man. What do we say, church? Let Jesus be exalted in our hearts. What do we say, church? Let Jesus be exalted in our heart. Okay. okay. Now, as I've been spending time with the Lord, I've been spending time in the book of First Kings. Man, wow. But the Holy Spirit been speaking, moving, man. As, as, uh, as I spend time with the, as I've been spending time with the Lord, I've been spending time in the book of Kings. And it says that the house that was built by the Lord is called by his name. Mm, mm, mm. Brothers and sisters, the greatest call, the greatest call you will ever have on your life, the greatest call you will ever have on your life is your relationship with Jesus. The greatest call you will ever have in your life is your relationship with Jesus. Now, if us who are earthly, when there is a very important call, we make sure we are watching, listening, licking out, checking the phone, checking the email to make sure we don't miss that most miss that important call that we need to take care of. If us who are earthly would do that for the things that we deem important, how much more should we watch and be faithful and be alert to the calling on our lives through the salvation of Almighty God, through the Son, through His Son, who is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, right? Why? What do we say, church? Why? Because, church, we are the house of God. In Him, he dwell in us by his spirit. And that house was built and called by his name. That house is built and called, called by his name. And that name is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Okay? So, bro, so brothers and sisters, okay? if the house of God was built by his name, and the house of God was called by his, called by his name, then how much more should we live by that name? Oh. If the house of God was called by his name, because church, the church is not a building, but a people. So the people are called by his name. So if the house of God was called by his name, and the house of God is built by his name, how much more we should live by that name? Because the house of God is a living vessel. Oh, man. The house of God, the church, the people of God, the kingdom of heaven is a living organ, is a living house. It is a living organism. Okay? God is a God of the living, not a God of the dead. So if the house of God is called by his name, which is alive, if the house of God is built by his name, which is alive, how much more should the people of God who are inside of the house live by his name for his glory. Okay? Because we don't just live by his name for ourselves, but we live by his name for his glory. Now, in this hour, there will be many false prophets going out claiming that they are living, claiming that they are for his name, but they are living for themselves. There's many false prophets in this hour that have gone out that Jesus warned about in Matthew 24 that is leading up to his second coming as a few years away. Many will go out in this hour claiming his name, but they will be living for themselves. But those that are true servants and faithful servants, they don't just claim him name, claim his name, but they live for his glory. Well, the people of God are called by his name. They are his servants. Therefore, we should live for his name, for his glory. We should live for his name, for his glory, and by his glory. Why? Because God's glory is what keeps us alive through his spirit. Therefore, apart from his glory, we cannot truly live for his name. 
Therefore, the only way to live for his name is through his glory. And the only way to live for his glory is through the gospel. Because his gospel is what revealed the glory that you should live by through the righteousness of his name, through the baptism of his spirit that cleanses us from our righteousness that renew his grace daily in our heart that we may be removed from death to life and exalt his name forever. Jesus. Okay. And then the Lord took me to the book of, then the Lord had me, he moved me forward in uh, the book of first King and there was great destruction happening in the land. There was great destruction happening in the land. And then the people began to ask themselves, why have this happened to the land? Jesus. Well, the Lord spoke to me. He said, son, so as it were then, how they were asking questions then, son, so will it be, so is it now in this hour, and so shall it be in the next few years when the destruction fall upon this earth, upon all those who have been rebelling. And rebellion and have not loved the truth. He says, son, right now I see a cry in the land where many people are asking in America and all around the world, why is this happening to the land? And the Lord spoke to me. He says, son, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Said, okay, Lord. He says, son, there's a great outcry in the earth, earth because the sin of this earth have arisen up to my ears. And now Oh, he and risen up to my ears, and the second coming of my son is extremely close a few years away. Prepare the hearts of my people. Okay, Lord. He says, son, there's a great outcry in the earth right now. The sin of the earth is coming up before my nostrils, coming up in my ears. Am I am I it, it, coming up before my coming up before my ears? I said, okay, Lord. He says, son, if your children and your household was disobeying you. Would you would you discipline them? I said, yes, Lord. Well, he says, son, if you who are earthly, that was redeemed by my grace, that was in death, but now in life by my name, only because I saved you. If you who are earthly would discipline your children, how much more shall I discipline this world for rebelling against my holy name? I said, oh, man. He says, son. So, so, as it, so as it were in the book of Kings where there was a great outcry on the earth and people asking why did this happen to the land? So shall it, so is it now and so shall it be in the next few years. He said, son, this is how I responded to them then. Well, what, Lord? Because they were they forsook the Lord and every man with an error according to his own way. Oh, the Lord said, they asking questions right now in the earth saying, why is this happening to the world? Why is this happening to the land with COVID-19 and all of the chaos? He said, son, because they, they do not love the truth. He said, son, they asking questions, why have they, why are these things are happening to the land? He said, son, because they have forsaken the Lord God Almighty. Not that I have left, but because they have forsaken me. He said, son, these things are happening to the land because they have forsaken the Lord and every man have went according to the error on his own way. He said, son, well, son, what is the deliverance? What is the hope? He said, son, there will be only, there will be only one hope. That is my word. He said, son, there will be only one deliverance. That is my word. Why, son? Because it's for my glory. He said, son, there will be only one deliverance, the cross. Why, Lord? Because it's for my glory. He said, son, if anyone will be wise, let them exalt the name of my son, Christ Jesus, not just with their lips, but with their heart by worshiping me in truth and spirit. Well, how, Lord, they better believe in my son. This day choose life or death. Why? Because the Lord is faithful and he's sovereign and he is punishing all rebellion. The Lord said, because they have forsaken me, these things are happening Every man have went astray according to the error, according to the error of his own way, and they will not repent and turn to the Lord. Therefore, let every man turn to repentance, because the only hope in this hour will be not the one world government, not the media, not the socialists, not the communists, not none of these 
main solutions of this one world government, the great reset, not none of these things will be your solution, says the sovereign Lord. He says, son, son, the only deliverance is the salvation of my son. Because I'm, I'm out, he said, my hand is stretched out. And everything around in this world is going dark. And the only salvation and light is in my son, Christ Jesus, who is the light of the world. Therefore, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay? And then the Lord took me to, then the Lord led me to Peter, First Peter, chapter 2. And the Lord said, son, whenever you talk, whenever you did quizzes, whenever you done jobs, whenever you uh, cook food, whenever you've been driven a car, he says, son, there have always been an example for you to follow. He said, saying, he said, when y'all build things in this life, son, when y'all create things in this life, we have events in this life. When you go online to your video, when you go online and watch videos to help do things, he says, son, whenever you do things in this life, there have always been an example. He says, son, if this earth, which is evil, he says, son, if this earth, which is evil, can create an example and put it on display. You who are earthly, you who are evil can put it on display to give an example for another man to follow. How much more? How much more will I leave an example for you to follow that will lead you to everlasting life? He says, son. He says, son, I left my example in my son, Jesus. In the book of first Peter. Peter spoke by the Holy Spirit said that the man Christ Jesus was the will of God, the sovereign will of God came and lived a godly life as an example of obedience to the father that every man should live by. And he said he left this as an example. So we got Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior, the bishop of our souls, the overseer of all our soul left heaven came into the earth to give us an example to live by for the glory of God so Christ Jesus king of heaven God almighty knows the beginning from the end knows the beginning of our soul and everything else that are attached to our soul even that is unseen that we cannot physically see know all things came into the earth, the one who know all things came into the earth to show us how to live a godly lifestyle to glorify, glorify the Father in heaven. He said he left us this example, therefore follow and do likewise as I have done. Brothers and sisters, therefore, let us to follow the example that Christ Jesus has given us by being fully obedient to the gospel. Because when we are full of obedience to the gospel and we live a life of repentance to the gospel, brothers and sisters, then the grace of God strengthens us to carry out that we are by his spirit. Okay? Because see, man cannot work and earn salvation, but man must obey salvation in the only way man can obey salvation is obey the gospel. Why? Because church, as we fully obey the gospel, we fully live in the salvation that has been given to us through his sacrifice. And as we fully live in the salvation that he has given us through his sacrifice, then we have fully followed the example that God has given us because his example is the gospel. For when we have to put together a, a bed or something or a car at a manufacturing plant, there's a blueprint that is laid out for us to follow. You know? God has given us the blueprint, which is the gospel, the Holy Bible that speaks about the gospel, that every man that follow the gospel follow the example that God has given us through his son. And that son is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Okay? Why is it important? Because when we obey the gospel, we refrain from evil. Well, the Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? Well, the, great, the greatest evidence that shows that we fear the Lord is when we obey the gospel. Because when we obey the gospel, we obey his name. And when we obey the gospel, 
we obey his glory. And when we live by the gospel, it shows that we are living for his glory. And when we live by the gospel for his glory, we exalt his name. And as we exalt his name, it have made evident that we are turning from evil. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And, and, and the wisdom that comes from God causes you to turn from evil. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the wisdom of heaven tells you to turn from evil. And as we obey the gospel, we turn from evil. How? How when we obey the gospel, we turn from evil? Because when we obey the gospel, we live unto righteousness. That righteousness is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? So when we obey the gospel, brothers and sisters, we exalt Jesus from our heart because the spirit lived in us, through us, that causes us to walk right by him. By causing us to make him our one and only desire that we may long for nothing else but his glory. Okay? Why is that important? Because he wants us to be in love with him. Not just not just not just know the love of God, but be in love with God by being in his love. And that love is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay. So as we obey the gospel, brother and sisters, we refrain from evil. We seek peace. We don't do evil evil for Jesus has spoken in this hour, brother and sisters. They was called wrong, right, and right, wrong. So is that that was prophecy? Is that happening? Absolutely. They want to defund the police. That's wrong. But they call it the right. You hear them hollering? You hear you hear some people hollering? Uh, there's no justice and there's no peace. So in reality, we're saying, look, we want to kill and do evil. That, and so in reality, we're saying we're going to kill and do evil and hope that good come out of it. That ain't what God said. God said, overcome, don't overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. You can't commit evil and expect for good to come out of it. For Jesus has spoken, he said, do thorns and thistles. Can you get grapes? Can you bear fruit from thorns and thistles? Well, evil is thorns and thistles. We can't bear no good fruit from thorns and thistles. But instead, you're going to get pricked even more. Think about a thorn bush. I can't grab a thorn bush with my bare hands and expect not to get poked by it. It's impossible. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us refrain from evil, church. Let us be a light in this hour, walking in the love of Christ and the truth of his righteousness. Because in this hour, we can't put evil for evil. Meaning, we can't try to live, do evil deeds and expect from good out of it, good come out of it. But rather, let us obey the gospel that the righteousness of God may consume every evil. Because we live faithful according to his name. Even if we suffer for that which is good, it's for the glory of God and our suffering not in vain. Okay? Let us seek peace. What is that peace? Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Because in this hour, there will be a false peace in this one world government. False peace coming from this one world government. But it's not the true peace. True peace is being made right with God through the salvation of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Why it's also important, brothers and sisters, that we must live for his glory and exalt Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Because, brothers and sisters, in this hour, the judgment will begin at the house of God. Okay? In this hour, it's going to show those who really believe and those who don't believe. It's going to show those who really have faith but, or those who really trust in, this, trust in this world. Why? Because this whole world is going into captivity by the one world government and they are going to enslave people by physical possessions. It's going to really show those who worship in truth and in spirit because those that worship in truth and in spirit won't be attached to their physical things because they live for God through the spirit and not for the things of this world. But in this hour, it's going to reveal those who really live by the spirit and those who claim Jesus but really live by the flesh. Okay? So judgment will be, uh, be begin at the house of God where it will separate the weak from the tares. How do we remain faithful? By having a genuine relationship with Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Keep watching. What's the next thing the Lord spoke to me? He said, keep watching this hour, brothers and sisters. Why? That we may not be caught off guard so that we may be sober because 
only those who are sober is really living for his glory. See, God glory causes, cleanses our past, present, and future. And also God glory calls to live for eternal life and calls us to be sober and aware of what's going on around us. Okay? Let me give you an example. I think I spoke this recently. In Portland, they burn in American flags, but they burn in Bibles. And I said, well, what the burning Bible got to do with American flag? Because brother and sister, we're not, this, this is not a physical thing, brother and sister. This is a spiritual thing that is going on, brother and sisters. Christian and Jews will soon be up on the attack, brother and sisters, by this one world global entity. Why they why why do are they burning flag in America, burning flags in the Bible? Because America was built off tradition, uh, a Judeo Christian value. So the one world government, the globalists of America, they want to burn, they want to remove the Bible. They want to remove, they want to remove the Bible from America. Because they know the Bible tells us about what they are doing in this hour. So they want to move it out of the way. Okay. So what do we say, church? Let it be sober. Let us raise up because we know what's going to happen. Once they signed the seven-year peace agreement, there was going to be a period of false peace for the first three and a half years, and the last three and a half years will be the greatest tribulation we have ever seen. When we see them burning Bibles, when we see the, the riots and brothers, these are the precursor of how we'll be in the great tribulation. Let us be sober, sober. For Christ Jesus coming soon, a few years away, brothers and sisters. What, what are the two next events to happen on God's prophetic time clock? The seven-year peace agreement and the next World War III at the sixth trumpet that will wipe out a third of mankind. Those are the next two things that happen on God's prophetic time clock. And we inching closer there every day. Brothers and sisters, what do we say, church? It's time for us to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting on the end time to get here because the end is now. Yes, beloved. We're not waiting on the end time to get here because the end is now. And what do I mean by end is now? Not the end of this world, but the end of this age. Meaning the end of the governments as we know. It. When they signed that peace agreement at the end of their seven year period, Jesus would end this age, meaning he will overthrow every human government and he will begin to reign with his government, which is the saints. Church, let us not get caught up now. Our reward is coming, and that reward is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So when I when, when it said end of the age, it's not talking about the end of the world, but it's talking about the end of this age, the end of this present form that we are in, that we are living in now, and we will enter during the millennial reign, we will enter during the thousand year reign of Christ. Then after that, it will be a world without end where we will live with him forever. Who knows what God got planned for those who are faithful, but most important, the primary reward, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Those are the things that happen. A few years away, brothers and sisters, whoever has an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Because I kid you not, brothers and sisters, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus have took me in the spirit, and I've seen the new heaven and new earth coming down from God out there. I've seen us being taken up after that seven-year period. After that seven year, after the great triple great tribulation, I seen us being raptured up and we got new bodies. I seen you took me in the spirit and I seen us eating at the table. I seen us eating at the marriage supper of the lamb. And it was beautiful. Brothers and sisters, Christ Jesus comes soon. Prepare. Live to leave, not to stay. Live for heaven. This present form is passing away. There's a great war for those who are faithful. No more pain, no more suffering. This present suffering is nothing compared to the life that he had prepared for us in his glory, for his glory. Let him be exalted. You shall see the glory of God. Okay? If you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer. Say, dear Lord, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me my sins. Thank you for leading me to this place. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' person, I pray. Amen. 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 If you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. If you accept the Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. Now go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, okay? And brother and sister, Prophecy 101. 
check out, go to do your research. They, there's a global, great global reset uh, starting January 21. The global is the one world government. The World Economic Forum want to have a global reset. They want to kill capitalism and bring this whole world into communism. Is that biblical? Absolutely. Revelation 17 said the beast will be red. That red represents communism. So the Great Reset is all about is all about this world going into communism and moving from capitalism. The Bible teaches that the one world government of the Antichrist will be a communist socialist government. And here we are, 2021. They're talking about bringing everything from a capitalist standpoint to a communism standpoint. Why? Because they want wealth, re wealth redistribution. They want to push a radical left, a radical communist, social, progressive, multilateralist, one world order agenda, brothers and sisters. That is what is going on. Check that out. ID 2020. World, world health, global vaccination, brothers and sisters, all of these things are attached to this world, world global agenda. Rioting, all of these things, they got people out there operating, brothers and sisters. They got people out there operating to push forward their agenda. They want a, a, a universal income. Why? Why do they want communism? They want wealth redistribution. Distribute everybody wealth around the world and soon and they create a system where they can put your money, your health care, and everything attached to that one system. Make sure they're talking about a global reset. Brothers and sisters. So go to doing your research or something. Check out the global reset. You can Google it. Check out ID2020. Where they plan to number every human being in the world. Check out some of the things that, check out some of the technology they're doing over in the Middle East, over in Africa, in third world country. Testing their technology. Testing their technology. Um, 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 check out some of these how people uh, like Bill Gates and the things that they are planning with with different types of technology how people that how how they can talk about how they talk about helping the prison how they talk about the prison system where you don't even have an ankle you don't even like people don't even have to have an ankle monitor with some of the system they are working on brothers and sisters brothers and sisters why are they doing these things the Bible told us that in the book of Revelation 13 they would make everyone take a mark whether they bun free Slave, rich, it, no matter who it is, because they want to control. They, this one world government want to be God. Same people that are talking about global reset, all this, that, all of this stuff are led by one spirit, Satan. He's the one pushing the media, doing. He's the one behind these people with these ideas. The media, why? Because here's Satan playing in the end time. Satan plan to rule the world through a one world government. This is plan. This is mo. This is blueprint. He planned to enslave the world into a mark of the beast and rule this world. That's what he want to do. That's why this one world government want to be God. And all the globalists in this world want to be God. What's behind it? Say, how do we know that? Because he got kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be God. He wanted to be like God. He got kicked out of heaven. So it's not, it's not by accident that this one world government wants to be God because he's the one behind it. Revelation 13 is what is going on right now. Church, Remember, Christ Jesus loves us, loves us so much, even to the death on the cross. So what should we say, brothers? What should our mindset be? We should rather have nothing in this life and be with Jesus than to have everything in this life and miss Jesus. Because true success is not having an abundance of things in this life. But true success is being received by the one who will treat you into life when he comes. Because we can have a lot of degrees and I ain't knocking no degrees. I got a degree myself, certification. But let me tell you something. We can have all of these degrees, all of these degrees, but when he come and we don't go with him, then we was failure. I don't care if we was failure. I don't care how successful we was in the sight of man. If he come, we don't go with him, then we was a complete failure because our true duty was to live and obey God from the heart. But we can have none of these degrees, no degree, no exploits, no massive, uh, no massive ministry, none of these big exploits. We can just be someone that genuinely loved Jesus and just shared the gospel every day in his life, living for his glory. And when he come, we go with him, it was a smashing success because we live and fulfill our true duty, which is to live and obey God from the heart. He's through the testimony of his son, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Church, let us remember, it's time for us to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we're not waiting on the end time to get here because the end is now. Remember, Christ Jesus loves us, loves us so much, even to the death on the cross. And if anybody tell you anything else, it's a lie. Let us find confidence in his grace. He knows we won't be perfect. 
you know, we won't make, you know, you know, we make mistakes, but let that grace, let that fall, cause us to turn more to his grace, cause us to be even more obedient by his spirit leading us to, to a, a greater righteous place in him through an intimate place in our heart. Church, remember, Jesus loves us so much, even to the death on the cross. See you next time, brothers and sisters. Love you. Goodbye.